The first step of any diagnostic procedure is to get a lay of the land with inspection and targeted disassembly. The variable valve timing systems, or VBT, can produce some misleading symptoms and codes that might send you down the wrong diagnostic path. Often, the source of the code is not a damage sensor or solenoid. It is the mechanical side of the system. The first check to perform, well, it's simple. Pull the dipstick, inspect the oil level, and also the appearance of the oil. Engine oil viscosity and filter flow can affect the ability of the cam phaser to control the valve timing. Changing the viscosity in a 5W20, let's say to a 5W30, can cause a variable valve timing system issues. Look at the oil filter. Sometimes it can give you an idea of the oil and when it was changed. Also, look at the oil change stickers that could be in the door jam or up on the windshield. You might want to check the oil before continuing with further diagnostic processes for sluggish or position related codes. Give the oil a sniff. The gasoline smell on the dipstick could be from the direct injection system. The high pressure fuel pump can leak past the plunger and dilute the oil in the crankcase and change the performance of the VVT system. The passages in the oil control solenoid and also the phaser are very tiny. Just about every manufacturer has metal screens and filters in the VVT system to prevent debris from reaching the variable valve timing components. Some manufacturers make the screen serviceable inside the cylinder head, front cover, or even the valve cover. Most other manufacturers put screens on the side of the oil control valve. You can look at the screens and spot any of the blockages. It is becoming more common on high mileage VVT vehicles to see debris built up on the screen that is usually gasket material and other cured sealants that block all of these little passages. It is becoming more common on high mileage vehicles to have debris like gasket material and cured sealants to block the oil screens. One mechanical component that is often missed in a VVT diagnostic process is the oil pump. A weak or worn out oil pump can cause VVT codes for sluggish operation on high mileage vehicles even after replacement of the actuator. Make sure you check the service information for the test for the oil pump. Often it is a lot easier to evaluate with a scan tool or a pressure gauge to make sure that the pump is operating efficiently. Most actuators have pins that slide into the actuator's two plates when the oil pressure drops below a certain level. The pin prevents the camshaft from moving during startup when the oil has yet to reach the top of the motor. If the pin is damaged, the engine can produce a clunking or clicking noise when the engine is first started. The sound is the veins and chambers inside the phaser crashing into each other as the camshaft flows make contact with the lifters or valves. To confirm the pin is still working on some engines, you can disconnect the oil control solenoid. When the solenoid is not powered, it will stop the oil from reaching the phaser and pulling out the pin. If the noise is still present, the pin has been damaged inside the phaser. If the noise goes away, while well, the pin is still working and you need to do other diagnostic tests. When the actuator is worn out, it will have problems adjusting the angle of the camshaft relative to the engine timing. When the actuator leaks internally, the camshaft will not be stable and it won't stay in the commanded position. Depending on the engine, the timing could be retarded or even advanced, depending on the force required to turn the camshaft lobes against the valves. Just remember, when you're diagnosing a VBT problem, it is both mechanical and electrical. First, address a lot of the mechanical issues and you can avoid going down the wrong path with a diagnosis. I'm Andrew Markell. Thank you very much.